Captain Mike's Rigging Station. Powered by Florida Sport Fishing TV. What's up, guys? I'm Captain Mike, and welcome to my rigging station. Right here, this is where it all happens in advance of every episode of Florida Sport Fishing TV. We spend a tremendous amount of time in our rigging station prepping because I'm telling you what, regardless if you're targeting marlin or mackerel, proper preparation is vital to your success. And that's exactly our topic of conversation today, mackerel. But not the king mackerel. We're going to talk about Spanish mackerel and the elusive Ciro mackerel. Very similar species, but a lot of differences between these two different fish. And I'll tell you what, what a great game fish. Readily available, okay, relatively easy to catch. I mean, when you get on these things, you're on them. They taste great on a dinner table. Fresh Spanish mackerel is really, really hard to beat. And I'm telling you, it's just a great target for anglers of all skill levels and all ages, and certainly for kids, okay? so. Let's talk about what we do to prep for a mackerel trip. And again, I want to stress, we're not talking about kingfish. We're not talking about king mackerel. That's a different fishery altogether. We kite fish for king mackerel. We slow troll live baits. A lot of different ways to target those species. This is something different altogether, okay? And we're going to kind of bounce back and forth because we're getting ready to film an episode on Spanish mackerel and Ciro mackerel going out tomorrow, tomorrow morning, bright and early. And I want to talk to you about my prep and exactly what I do to get ready to find and fool these amazing game fish, okay? First, it's the boat, obviously plenty of safety gear, plenty of fuel, I don't need to tell you all of that. I've got a bunch of spots designated that I want to try and hit and understand the habitat of these fish and where they are. Here it is, winter time, it's prime time in South Florida and certainly the Florida Keys. This is peak season for both Spanish mackerel and Ciro's. They migrate south during the winter time for more suitable and comfortable conditions. In the summertime, these fish will move north North. And understand the Spanish mackerel, two bodies of fish. Body of fish in the Gulf of Mexico that'll move all the way up to the northern Gulf, you know, in the summer and again migrate down the Florida Bay uh, in the wintertime when the water temperatures drop and they're too chilly up north. And then you have the Atlantic body of Spanish mackerel that are readily available on the Atlantic side and they will roam further up the coast and of course you've got areas like Pex Lake and you know almost to the middle of the state where Spanish mackerel are a staple. The Ciro mackerel a much different fish. They look very similar, and the easy way to distinguish between the two is the Spanish mackerel, yellow dots all over their bodies, the Ciro mackerel, dots and dashes. That's the easiest way for you to remember. The Ciro mackerel are not a schooling fish, but not uncommon to find them in packs if the proper scenario presents itself. Unlike the Spanish mackerel that you'll find in Florida Bay that'll school in huge numbers, the Ciro's, as I mentioned, are more solitary. You're gonna be you know, really looking for these fish on the Atlantic side, and here in the Keys, that means the patch reefs. Anywhere from 20 to 30 feet of water is prime Ciro mackerel territory, the inside edge of the patch reef line. They're not really on the outside because I'll tell you what, that's where all the predators are, sharks, Wahoo, sailfish, everybody, and or I should say everything that's swimming eats the Ciro's. So they tend to stay on the inside edge of those reef lines. That's where you're gonna look for them. And understand, look, we're going out light tackle fishing. I don't know if I'm gonna find the Spanish, I don't know if I'm gonna find the Ciro mackerel, whichever it is, but I'm properly prepared for both. Um, because I'll tell you what, the tactics and the techniques are relatively the same for either species. The only difference is the venue. Where am I going, okay? Where am I going to look for these? Again, if I really want to catch the Spanish mackerel in big numbers, I'm definitely going to go up in Florida Bay. Anywhere in Florida Bay, 10 to 12 feet of water, stop the boat, start chumming. As long as you have wind and current flowing in the same direction, both working together for you, you should find success relatively fast, okay? So it's up in Florida Bay, it's not really about structure, it's more about conditions. If you have the right conditions, you should easily get on a hot bite with plenty of Spanish mackerel to keep you busy. 
the zeros, which I'm really keen on, because they're just so much more challenging to find and catch. They get a little bit larger than the Spanish mackerel, taste a little bit better on the grill. Um, they get a little bit, you know, as I mentioned, bigger and feistier, and they're definitely harder to find in fools. So I really like that challenge, and that's why I'm hoping I find some of those zeros. But Again, I don't know, so I'm ready for both. One thing I know for sure, the cereal mackerel, I'm not going up into Florida Bay. I'm staying on the ocean side. I'm gonna be fishing those patch reefs, okay? A little bit of deeper water, 25, 26 feet is really what I'm shooting for, okay? But again, with either species, the approach is the same. Hey guys, I'm Captain Mike, and welcome to my rigging station. You've asked over and over, here's the answer. Tubro fishing. Four different styles of rod and reel holder mounts for every application. Their ingenious lure and leader keeper system is perfect, either permanently mounted or portable. It keeps everything I need right at my fingertips so I could focus on staying hooked up. Listen, I count on Dubro products, so should you. Check out their full line of innovative gear at DubroFishing.com. For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet TZ Touch 3's new PVG and Fish It Drifted Technologies. Build your own three-dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Furuno. Chaos. Gear matters. Yeah. Oh my god! That right there, baby, is deep dropping. Chaos. Gear matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. Deep Glow outshines the competition. With a robust housing, durable glass dome, and stainless steel hardware, Deep Glow lights are the toughest, brightest, and easiest to install. Throw them in, plug them in, and let the show begin. I've literally created my own feeding frenzy. Residential or commercial, one or 50 lights, Deep Glow increases property values, creates loyal customers to waterfront businesses, and provides years of trouble-free service. Tell them Captain Mike sent you and receive a free timer. First and foremost, you gotta chum. If you chum, they will come. That's the bottom line. So whatever area you get to, wherever you're gonna be looking for these mackerel, you know, you've gotta chum. Get a couple of chum blocks, put them in a big chum bag, do a couple of figure eights, circle around the area that you wanna fish before you ever even stop the boat. Get that scent in the water and working for you immediately. And it shouldn't take too long for any mackerel in the area to slowly gather in that chum slick, okay? You're gonna be anchored, you're not gonna be drifting. This is not a game of drifting. It's a game of sit and wait for the fish to come to you and to congregate in your your chum slick. Have plenty of chum because you may go through quite a bit of it if you have a lot of current. You don't know, so don't go out there with one seven pound block. Think cases, don't think small boxes, okay? Now understand, once you're on the anchor and once you're chumming, now again, it's just a matter of waiting for the mackerel to show up. I'm gonna keep my eye out for birds because birds are a great indication that mackerel are in the area. They're pushing the bait fish up toward the surface. So even when I'm looking for those mackerel and I'm looking for a place to anchor up, to set up shop, so to speak, I'm always keeping my eye out for the birds. They're gonna lead the way to the action. That's for sure. So I'm anchored up. We're chumming. Now my only focus is in that chum slick coming right off the back of the boat. I'm not casting over there. I'm not casting over there. I'm not casting up there off the bow. I'm just casting right behind the boat. And understand, you're gonna cast a lot. This is not a game of sit and wait. You're throwing baits, you're working baits, a lot of artificials. We're gonna talk about what lures we fish and why. Um, but it's a very active type of fishing that requires you to be actively fishing the entire time. Look, you're not going out there targeting, 
you know, a 50 to 500 pound fish. That's not what this is. The mackerel are relatively small. You know, they'll range anywhere from two to six pounds. But that's why we keep the tackle very light and very sporty. And that's the key, it's all relative, okay? You're targeting small fish, but they're scrappy. They're a lot of fun to catch on light tackle. They hit hard, they scream line off the reel, you know, again, on the appropriate light gear. But remember, you just never know because here, especially across the Florida Keys, there are so many different predators that inhabit the same area where it's not uncommon to throw a plug or throw a bait or a jig or whatever it is that you're throwing. And when you're targeting the Spanish mackerel, suddenly a big cobia grabs a bait. So you have to have gear that is relatively heavy enough to handle some of those surprises, but you want to keep it light. So we you know, really like to do this and increase the challenge by fishing a lot of artificial lures. I really like that, you know? Again, these fish are relatively plentiful. They grow fast, they multiply fast. And, you know, interestingly, both the Spanish mackerel and the Ciro's, they migrate way offshore to spawn. And then, of course, they'll work their way back into coastal habitats and estuaries, grass beds, coral reefs, all sorts of structure near shore. But just a really cool game fish. Um, again, they grow very fast, but they will live to about 10 years old. Most of the mackerel that we're going to be targeting that you catch on a regular basis are really probably two to four years old. You know, all of those fish in that two to six pound class. So we're chumming, here it is. I've got rigged and ready a set of eight rods that I'm going to be using. And once again, I really like fishing the artificials. This is a seven foot six rod from Chaos, just a basic composite spinning outfit, graphite uh, and e-glass, really strong, but really sensitive. It's long at seven foot six, so I can cast a country mile way back into my slick and cover a lot of ground. It's matched to a Shimano Stratic 4000. What an absolutely perfect setup. Super light, super comfortable. You're not gonna get fatigued. You can fish with this all day long. Now, in this particular scenario, I've got all of my Stratic spooled with monofilament. This is not a game of braid. I don't need braid in any way whatsoever. I'm fishing 10 pound high catch diamond line. 10 pound test monofilament, clear, you can, you know, very stealthy, very, very stealthy, very thin, very sensitive. I've got the end of the line connected with a small little blood knot. I've added about 30 inches of 20 pound test. I beefed it up just a little bit on the end because that's where you see all of the abuse. That's what's gonna rub on the boat, might rub on the fish, I might be flipping fish up, whatever it may be. So I just beefed that up a little bit. From there, the one universal factor that you'll see across all of my outfits is a short trace of wire. These fish have super sharp teeth and they're gonna cut you off all day long, okay? A short trace of wire, you don't need a lot, no more than six inches at the very most, and you don't need very heavy wire, like number three. You know, anywhere in that 25 to 40 pound range is plenty, nothing more than that. If you enjoyed this episode, we talked a lot about tackle, a lot about finding these fish, staying on them. Got it. All right, all right. Nice job. What a fish. Oh, yeah, that's a fat one right there. That's what we want. Chicken is Oh, nice one. Look at that one. Got it. Nice. That's a tuna. That's what it's all about. Right there. Oh, my God. That's what I'm talking about. Just real. Just real. All right, come on, come on. Somebody get in there. Get in there. Crank, 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 crank. Got him, got him, got him. We 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 got him.
Get him in the boat, ready? Oh! Jeopardize your ride. Never jeopardize losing a ride ever. Oh, Jeopardize your ride. Never jeopardize I start off with some Nomad Shikaris. Look, what does that look like to you? It just mimics a small ballyhoo. That's it, that's the primary forage of these fish are just little ballyhoo, you know, little pilchards and white bait. So anything that mimics that is just an ideal bait to throw at these mackerel. So I start off with something, as I mentioned, that really mimics those little ballyhoo, especially when I'm targeting the zeros. Okay, because again, I'm on the ocean side, I'm in Ballyhoo territory, it's a natural forage. It's what they're eating all day long. I fish a couple of different patterns, you know, both of them, again, mimic those Ballyhoo, just absolutely do a perfect job at mimicking the primary forage. I can't stress how important that is. Nothing fancy, okay, nothing fancy at all. It's got a couple trebles, short piece of wire, Anybody can do this. From there, I also kind of switch it up a little bit because maybe the fish are not keyed in on the ballyhoo. Maybe they're keyed in on white bait and small pilchards. Well, how about that little small mad scad? Again, a little nomad mad scad. Small little bait right there, but I'm telling you what, that perfectly mimics and matches the size, the shape, the profile of another one of their primary forage species, the pilchards and the small white bait. So why not throw that? I don't need live bait. That's better than a live bait. I can control it however fast or however erratic I want it to swim. I've got four outfits rigged and ready to go at that seven foot six range. And then we've got another four outfits. And certainly look, you don't need to go out there with eight rods and reels. If you can, great. You know, we like to mix it up with the different lures, uh, but the tackle is all the same. These rods are exactly the same. They're rated for eight to 17 pound line. The only difference is they're seven foot. They're not seven foot six, a little bit shorter. Other than that, they're identical. The same Shimano Stratic 4000 loaded with the same 10 pound diamond line. It can't be any easier. The same short trace of wire. In this case, a small little micro jig, just a little metal micro jig right there. You know, sometimes those mackerel, they're keyed in on those really small baits, the little sardines, the little rainfish, anchovies, all sorts of little tiny juvenile bait fish. So I like to be able to match the hatch. It could be something that looks like a ballyhoo, it could be something that looks like a pilchard, or it could be something that just looks like a tiny little anchovy or something like that. It's heavy, so I could really throw it a great distance out into the chum slick. I can jig it, I can bounce it, I could work it back to the boat as quickly as I can, and they will jump all over that. And finally, look, if I can't get them the bite on the artificial lures, which is very rare, but it does happen. Sometimes they get spooky, maybe they're under a lot of pressure. And again, I wanna point out the Spanish mackerel are often a lot easier to catch than the zeros because the Spanish school up in such big numbers that they're just that much more aggressive. They don't have the time or the, the privilege of being picky. If something comes by them, they need to grab it because if they don't, one of the other 100 fish right around them will. A larger zero mackerel cruising a patch reef, he can be a little bit more picky. And, and I'll tell you what, if it doesn't look right, move right, he may not touch it. He may realize it isn't right. In that case, we will scale all the way back. We'll eliminate the wire altogether. We'll go to a long shank hook. Okay, this is what provides us with that bite protection. It's that long shank Oshignassi hook, okay, right there, okay? 
That's what's gonna provide us with a little bit of bite protection. It's a 5.0 size, and we've got it connected to 30 pound mono. We've taken a short piece, about 30 inches, of 30 pound fluorocarbon diamond presentation, and we've eliminated the wire altogether. When they won't bite anything else, I'll tell you what, use a bally hoop, catch some fresh bally hoop. They're gonna be in your chum slick, okay? If you're fishing on those patch reefs, the bally hoop are gonna be behind the boat, throw the bally hoop out, pull it through, catch a bunch of bait, cut those baits real nice in the fillet them. I like to take a fillet off the side of that bally hoop, put it on that hook, throw it back there, let it float back naturally with the chum slick. And I'll tell you what, if there's any zeros around, they can't ignore that. Fresh bait is vital in today's highly pressured fisheries, and no one makes it easier to catch live bait than the Bally Hoop. With a complete line of collapsible hoop nets and accessories, the Bally Hoop is a must have for every angler. Simply deploy the Bally Hoop and watch the magic. With the Bally Hoop, catching live bait is clean, fast, and simple. Ask for the Bally Hoop at your local tackle shop or visit us online to find a dealer near you. So between these eight rods, you know, we obviously have a variety of different lures, a variety of different, you know, options that we can throw with these baits. It just keeps it, or throw with these fish, it just keeps it interesting because it can get a little monotonous when the bite's on. There's only so many mackerel that you can catch. I promise you, your arm will fall off from catching them when you're really on top of them. So we like to, you know, like I said, spice it up by throwing different baits. It keeps it exciting, it keeps it fun. And it really stacks the odds in our favor because they may really have a preference for one lure over another or one presentation over the other. Couple of things to remember. Bring a lot of leader. I carry 20, 30, 40, 50, even 60. I don't know what I'm gonna encounter up there in the Gulf. I don't know what I'm gonna encounter on the patch reefs. I wanna be ready for everything. Even though I'm targeting the mackerel, okay? Even though that's what my target is tomorrow, I don't know what might pop up out of nowhere and present itself and I wanna be able to switch gears if I have to to maximize on every bite. Bring plenty of wire. Okay, some spare wire, variety of different lures, you know, anything, like I said, something that potentially looks like a valley hoo that's long and slender. Here's another color pattern of that same bait, the shikari, but I think you can clearly see what an ideal artificial that is if you're trying to mimic a valley hoo. Obviously, plenty of these twitch baits as well. Okay, right there. Small, easy for the fish to grab, little trebles, so be careful because there's obviously a lot of treble hooks involved in this. But look, pay attention to what's happening around you. I can't stress that enough. In this fishery, even though you're fishing light tackle, the details matter. They matter just as much as if you were targeting Wahoo or if you're targeting anything else offshore. Everything is just lighter, it's scaled down, it's smaller, you know, it's more sensitive, but that means it's also more fragile. We're fishing 10 pound mono. So easy for these fish to cut you off and they've got sharp little razor like teeth, you know, designed for shredding. That's what those teeth, they're like little, you know, triangular shaped teeth that they'll destroy whatever it is that they grab. So constantly feel your leader for frays. You know, if something's frayed or nicked or braided, cut it and retie it. Don't let angler failure or tackle failure enter the equation and cost you quality fish. I stress that with you in all of my seminars. I stress that on all of these episodes and it's just as important in this scenario. If I'm on a spot and I can't find a mackerel, if they don't show up within, oh gosh, 30 to 60 minutes, I'm out of there. Pick up 
and move. Go to a different end of a, the reef line, go to a different depth if you're up in Florida Bay. Don't get carried away when you get on top of these things. The limit with Spanish mackerel is 15 per person. It's easy to catch 15 per person and you certainly don't need more than that. It's not a real great fish to freeze. It's certainly much better to eat fresh. They make great smoked fish dip, so it's a great fish to brine and ultimately smoke. Um, even sashimi, fresh Spanish mackerel and fresh cereal mackerel is some of the best sashimi that you'll ever eat. Winter time, as I mentioned earlier, is the key time to find these fish. The Spanish mackerel, even though they'll roam further north into the Carolinas and all the way up into New England, Florida is going to be your prime, prime territory for the Spanish. The Ciro mackerel, the ones that we're really after, South Florida. They rarely leave South Florida. It's a South Florida staple down here. And the Keys, the Florida Keys is the epicenter of the Ciro mackerel fishery in the wintertime. But as I mentioned, they're just not that easy to find and fool like the abundant Spanish mackerel are. Fortunately for us down here across the Florida Keys Island chain, we have access to both fisheries. So be prepared. One day you may have to fish the Atlantic, the next day you may have to go 10 to 15 or 20 miles up in Florida Bay in the Gulf of Mexico to get on top of the Spanish mackerel layer. In either scenario, as I mentioned, look for wind and current to both be working for you, flowing in the same direction. Look for birds to lead the way to the action as to where you should fish. Try different depths. Be prepared accordingly, and at the end of the day, I promise you, you're gonna have an absolutely awesome time mackerel fishing. Connect with the crew on Instagram at Florida Sport Fishing TV. Catch our extreme seminar series at www.fsftv.com and get hooked up.